Right guys, what is going down? We are here with Dr. Ian Mitchell. Hi, how you going? Who uh, removed my gyno over a year and a half ago. Yeah. About that. I thought um, it was longer, but you're absolutely right. You guys know that was a life-changing experience for me. You guys know, go watch the video before this one. I talk about my whole gyno story growing up with, with it. And then obviously it got worse when, when I jumped on gear and did all that kind of mess around with all that stuff, which I probably shouldn't have. Um, but it's a very common issue and I'm just excited to be here with Ian right now talking about it. Uh, we've got a lot of questions come through. Yep. People are very curious. Um, obviously, it's, a, it's such a common thing. Really common. And even people are confused uh, on the definition of it, like if they've got it. Um, so we're just going to get right into some questions uh, regarding gyno itself and also the surgery which Ian provides here on the Gold Coast at just a crazy rate. Everything else I looked at was about eight to twelve grams kind of thing and that, then, that's pretty standard even now it's like most yeah, people tell me it's between nine nine and ten thousand yeah and most other places. i even i had a friend in new zealand and his one costed i think it was like 12 or 14 grand so it's a lot of money it's a lot of money so we've accumulated a lot of questions here so we're gonna we're gonna answer these with with dr mitchell here and also in the description box below i'm gonna leave all the details to his uh consulting place of residence i guess you're called yeah, that, that labrador consultation. Park. yeah labrador park medical yeah. center here in yeah. labrador park yeah and just <laughs> in the gold coast so i'll leave all the details in the description box and uh if you have any you know if you want to book him for any consultations on getting yours you're going to remove dr mitchell is the man to do it i can attest to that firsthand the money you'll save and the, the specialist treatment that you'll get to i mean how many of these have you done in you've removed I've done about 600 of 600 them. so question number one like there's been a lot of questions about like what defines gyno we've got one here um did you have a solid lump under the nipple mine look exactly like yours uh, obviously how mine looks beforehand and have been there since they can remember it just feels like soft and watery under the the areola is that the word areola yeah this guy says he's dieted and shredded before and it hasn't gotten rid of it he said he played around with tests and it, it got a little bit worse but still no hard lump um, yeah there's, there's a common misconception yeah a lot of people think that uh, you've got to have a really hard lump there for it to be gyne but um, I'm yet to open up someone's chest and not find breast and large breast tissue in there. The other thing about um, uh, breast tissue is some, uh, when, when your hormones have got a lot of estrogen there, it can actually be more swollen and tender and harder at those times. Other times it'll be softer. Yeah. But um, if you've got a lump there behind your uh, areola, yeah. Uh, it's almost certainly going to be uh, yeah. breast tissue. Whether it's hard or not. Whether it's hard or soft, if it's giving you that sort of conical uh, female kind of shape to your nipple area, yeah. it's almost always going to be breast tissue. So one thing that me and Ian were actually talking about just before this video, we actually, you know, we brought up some of these questions before just to have a, a discussion because I wanted to get a, an idea. This is something I don't even know as well. I've, I've had a, a friend actually message me. It looks like his nipples are just puffy, but there's no actual lumps under there. Um, you were t telling me about people, you know, surgeons who yeah. say they're going to do liposuction yeah. and then it ends up yeah. backfiring. And, a lot and of people, a lot of people believe they've got just fat, fatty breasts. Yeah. And uh, in fact, some of these people have ultrasounds, and the ultrasound report might report it as fatty tissue. Yeah. But it's almost even in the case where the ultrasound says it's fatty tissue, I've found through surg surgery, surgically operating on these people that uh, it's almost always breast tissue. Yeah. And uh, if you've got a pointy or feminized looking uh, nipple, it's almost certainly got some breast tissue behind that. Yeah. Guys have flat nipples, flat, flat areolas. That's the masculine look. If it's pointy or push forward in any way, it's, you've almost certainly got some uh, feminized gynecomastia yeah. behind there. I know a, a solution which some surgeons do at like hospitals and stuff, they do the liposuction and stuff. Yeah, uh, I was talking to Ian about this before. He was saying it's almost like a mismarketed thing, right? Yeah, it's all, I reckon it's almost like negligence for a plastic surgeon to go in and do liposuction unless they're also at the same time going to remove the breast tissue. Yeah, if you don't take the breast tissue out, uh, I've had a couple of guys who had uh, liposuction as yeah. their only treatment. Yeah, and uh, these guys have come in and their breast tissue is being transformed into just hard lumps of scar tissue, which are really difficult to cut out. So you've had to like go in and fix these you know, have to go and actually cut the up. breast tissue out and it's, yeah. and it's 10 times harder once they're all scarred up and uh, they're sort of stuck into you into your breast uh, yeah. it's very hard to get them out yeah and uh, that kind of surgery is a real nightmare yeah and it's because 
uh, some other places um, will offer just liposuction. Yeah. And if they don't remove the breast tissue, then it's always going to have those lumps there. A lot of people, I think the most asked question is, do you actually remove the glands? Which yep. wasn't, yeah. Completely remove the gland. Completely remove the gland. Yeah, so only, that... only little bit of gland that's left is um, without completely cutting out their nipple and areola, you're always going to have a couple of uh, breast tissue cells still on the back of the nipple area. Yeah, there. yeah. If you were then to go and say take steroids uh, and have a high estrogen uh, situation, yeah, and that that even that small amount can grow. And I've had guys come okay. back with pea and marble sized lumps behind their yeah. nipple, even though I've taken out the whole gland. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we do. We take out the whole gland. Yeah. Okay. That's, so that, that like so the chances are that it's less a lot less likely to come back, right? Yeah. Sometimes uh, if uh, sometimes you can get a, a what's called a tail that runs up along the outside of your pec there. Yeah. And uh, there have been occasions where myself and other doctors have left a little bit of the tail in. Uh, yeah. I can only think of like two guys that's happened to out of the hundreds I've done. Yeah. But um, these guys will come back later and they'll have a, a lump out here. I did one okay, recently, yeah, I just yeah. did a small incision out there and took the tail out. And yeah. They're yeah. really happy. A lot of people overseas have hit me up and they're saying they've spent like eight to ten grand on these surgeries, but they're the doctor hasn't actually removed their glands and then it's actually come up again. Yeah, they probably so just had liposuction in fact. Yeah. Essentially, so it's probably that, they've, they've paid that money for nothing. I had a guy, had his uh, breast uh, gynecomastia operated on in Thailand. I would hate to embarrass him, but yeah. his nipples and that so. started off up here, yeah. ended up down here. Yeah, really, yeah. And uh, we had to actually amputate his nipples and build some okay. nipples up here and yeah. then got tattooed around it and it looks yeah. okay now, but I okay. mean, that's what you that's can get if you go, like, yeah. uh, say, to Thailand or somewhere yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the last thing you want is to be messing around with this. Like I said, guys, I know from firsthand Dr. Mitchell's, what he did to, on mine, it just, I was so self-conscious and it was just the point I lost all my motivation and, um, if you know, if I hadn't found you, I would hate to have gone and paid like eight to ten grand yeah. for this. I would have had to probably get a loan out to do that and then for it to not even be done properly, obviously. Just on that point, we yeah. actually can offer finance to people. There's okay. a slight charge for that, okay, but yeah, people can pay option? it off. Yeah, okay, that's cool, that's cool, sweet. I mean, the big question is the price. People wondering on the price. Uh, currently, for your pricing, what, what are people looking at around the time? Yeah, of well, we don't charge nine or 10,000. If you're paying nine to 10,000, you're probably going to hospital, having an anaesthetist and uh, the op operating theater staff and the surgeon and that. Um, we do ours under local anaesthetic, and my yeah. experience is that people never complain about the pain. They say it's completely pain-free, most people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so it can be done under local anaesthetic. We did yours under local. Yeah, yeah. You weren't in agony? Not at all. No, no, no that's fine. And, was... and uh, yeah, so we, we because we cut out the anaesthetist in the hospital, we save thousands of dollars just there. Yeah. But my fees uh, for your average guy with uh, gynae, you know, if it's if it's significant, you're probably looking at 2600 If it's smaller, it might be a bit less. If they're large, it might be a bit more. Yeah. But you get, if you're an Australian citizen eligible for Medicare rebate, in other words, you just have to be an Aussie with a Medicare card, yeah. you get about 450 back from Medicare. Yeah. So yeah. that brings the price down to just over two grand. I think, I think when I got mine, I, I got about $600 back from the Medicare. Yeah. Um, but you, you're saying that can be, it can even be more sometimes depending yeah, on... Yeah, if you've had more medical expenses during yeah. the year, you have hit what's called the safety net, yeah. you can get, I think, uh, you have to check with Medicare, but yeah. hundreds more uh, back. The majority of people can expect about 450 back from Medicare. Yeah, so if you're, if you're an Australian watching this, um, no-brainer. I think, honestly, if, if this is something you're dealing with, it completely changed my life, so um, I guess it's... It's great. I know, it's crazy how many people, like when I put my first video out, how many people reached out. It was really something I was like, I was blown away by. People who, who don't necessarily take steroids or have never touched them and they've just, you know, they've got, they've got the, the guy. And then, you know, I did my video the other day and I actually looked into it and you kind of see the statistics of how common it really is. A lot of guys that come to see me say, I've been wanting to have this done for years, yeah, but I can never it. afford it because it's always oh. like nine, nine, ten grand elsewhere. Yeah. And so we're really happy to be able to provide the, an option yeah. for these guys. Just the exposure of it even, it's something that no one really talks about. The exact same thing, people will message me and they're just thank, so thankful that I've, I put my surgery out there in the first place yeah. you know, when I got that surgery because 
people are just mm. they've given up on themselves you know common things i hear are guys will choose uh, different colored t-shirts so choose ones with patterns on them yeah they'll be, yeah, they'll yeah, be yeah. loose <laughs> they don't feel confident yeah. to take their shirt off at the pool or the beach yeah, yeah. or even at the, in the change room at the gym that's a big one is the t-shirt thing because i had that happen like I couldn't wear any lights, colored tight t-shirts like I used to like wear. It. Yeah, this is a big one. People traveling, uh, whether it's, it's within Australia from somewhere like Sydney or Perth, uh, or even New Zealand. Um, we've got a message here. I live in Sydney and want this done. Um, he's had slight gyno from puberty. How long do I need to be in the Gold Coast to have everything done before I go back to Sydney? Yeah, well, same thing I guess if you're coming from New Zealand. Yeah, we, we, we get a, get quite a lot of people traveling interstate or even from overseas to have surgery here. Yeah. Um, we generally tell people they've got to stay a minimum of three days on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Uh, it's a good idea to book your accommodation if you are coming from interstate or overseas somewhere around Surface Paradise, Chevron Island area, yeah. because then you're not too far away from where we do the surgery. Yeah. Um, now, the re main reason we say three days is uh, you have your drains out after two or three days. We put drains in for the surgery. If you have a look at Friesman's previous videos, you'll see the drain tubes like there. When the drains come out, we generally got a pretty good idea of how the surgery is going to turn out. Yeah. If you've got a bleeding complication, which aren't common, but they do occur from time to time, you might get quite a bit of swelling on one side. Yeah. Um, we've got the option of getting rid of that, uh, it's caused by blood clotted blood behind where the uh, surgery was. So um, yeah. got the option uh, when the drains come out of actually um, taking out a couple of stitches and expressing all that blood out. It sounds yeah. gruesome yeah. and it's not yeah. painful at all. It, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and then re-stitching it. And then you can go back to interstate or overseas and just get your GP to take your stitches out. Yeah. Sometimes people do get complications, but I'm available 24 seven by text to all my yeah. patients. Yeah. So, you know, if you send photos or anything like that, that's a service that I hear other doctors don't often offer. Yeah, is, that's, that's uh, also that's one thing I can attest to you guys in. Um, you don't mind calling you. No, no, no please, yeah. Much. Um, yeah, just gave me his phone number and was like, just, just text me any questions, anything. So that was, you know, I, I felt so comfortable with that. Like, since we did yours, when people inquire by email, uh, we usually send them out a whole bunch of documents. Uh, there's a PowerPoint presentation, which is a bit lame. I'm going to update it, but it's got all the basics about <laughs> yeah. gynecomastia and the surgery. We send them out a sheet that explains uh, all the do's and don'ts. There's an website. email you can send them. There's an email the... I send everyone, and it's got it's got. Um, is this before the consultation, or uh, it can be, uh, okay. or sometimes when people are here, I usually send it during the consultation. So they've gotcha. got it. Yeah. It's got a. a, a everyone, most people have drains in. Almost everyone has drains in, and there's information. Uh, uh, clearly ex explaining how to how to manage the drains there yeah. as well. That's and right. I, I, I got one of those. Yeah, and on that yeah. sheet on the bottom, it's got uh, if you have any questions or issues, you can text. Yeah, please yeah. don't call me because I'm sometimes doing things like yeah. operating or sleeping. Maybe just with your family. Uh, no, but if you, but yeah. if you if you text me, it can be three in the morning. I'll hear it. I'll I'll get up and I'll answer you. Most yeah. people don't have to wait very long to get a response. Yeah, yeah. But the, that's on the bottom of the sheet that I'll send you awesome, by awesome, email. Yeah. With uh, with the consultation, like if anyone out there wants a consultation, what's the the process for that? Just ring. Uh, they have to ring Labrador Park Medical okay. Centre in yeah. Queensland. How much does the consultation cost? Uh, generally, it's a longer consultation, so it takes at least half an hour. Yeah. Uh, and if you're an Aussie, uh, it's eighty dollars. You get forty dollars back, so it's about forty bucks out of pocket. Yeah. Which I think it's pretty good value yeah. to have a diagnosis made and a, and work out a plan of. Of what we're going to do. One thing that makes me think is for people overseas or interstate, is there a way that they can almost do the consultation? Yeah, we can. We can do a we can do a phone consultation. Yeah. And uh, usually they'll send me video, uh, not videos, uh, pictures. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, JPEGs and stuff. I can usually talk to them on the phone, talk them through what the process is and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily have to turn up in person before the surgery, yeah. but uh, we want to make sure that people do fully understand the process of the surgery and yeah. the potential complications and all those things are in the information pack that we send them yeah. By, yeah. by email. Yeah, gotcha. So for anyone wondering, because that's the biggest thing, I always get hit up by a lot of people interstate and from New Zealand, Yeah, even from overseas. You've said actually people have actually come from overseas, from have America. Had, to had people coming from the west coast of America to come over here. Because it's cheaper. Yeah, sure. Nuts. And, and then they get, they get the holiday as well from Australia. Quite so. a few Kiwis come up here as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we can do that. Yeah, so.
Cool. Some more questions. Recovery period? We've read all the questions, guys, so we like know the main ones. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, a big one is the recovery uh, after the surgery. How much, like what would you recommend on the recovery front? There's two things people want to know. They want to know how long before they can go back to work yeah. and how long before they can go back to training. Yeah. And how long before they go back to work depends on what sort of job you've got. Yeah. If you're like me and you're a pencil pusher, uh, you can go Excellent. back to work probably when the drains come out after three days. Yeah. If you've got a job, work on the mines where you've got to be lifting heavy things, uh, you know, a manual labour type job, then you really should wait at least a minimum of two weeks until after the stitches come out. Yeah. In terms of training, uh, the first week you should not go to the gym at all. You should just veg out, take it easy. Yeah. Um, problem with uh, training uh, too early is you can get bleeding. The surgery involves removing the breast tissue yeah. and there's blood vessels that come into the breast tissue which are sort of amputated from the breast tissue. Yeah. Now, we like them to clot up and not bleed. Yeah. If you pump too much blood pressure through them by going to the gym and straining, then you can actually you make you get, you get bleeding. We call it secondary bleeding. It's bleeding after the original surgery. And yeah. uh, that can be a problem. So you don't yeah. want that. You really yeah. don't want, if you're gonna have the surgery, you don't want complications. Me and Dr. Mitchell talked about this. I was really good and followed everything by the book. I wasn't in a rush to get back to training, but sometimes you see people who are, they just rush back into stuff and that's usually the ones who have like complications like like bleedings and, and stuff when they shouldn't right no training at all for the first week you can yeah. do some cardio and some like leg extension maybe yeah. even leg press and leg curls i think two weeks no two weeks after my surgery i just did some leg extensions yeah and i think maybe i did some leg press or something yeah you can do cardio like the following week yeah. a week after all the bleedings all done yeah. and dusted yeah. so you can Go and do some treadmill or bike or yeah. whatever. From what from my experience, guys, when I got the surgery, um, it was it was two and a half weeks of completely nothing, and then I I got in for I did some leg leg extensions, and I think about three weeks after the surgery, I started doing um, things like arms, like bicep curls. I found even like three and a half to four weeks after, I could actually start doing presses. Yep. Um, the only issue was anything where I was moving my arms up above my shoulder height, so I couldn't do any shoulders. And the thing that took the longest, like the exercise which took the longest for me to do was lat pull downs, because that requires obviously that full stretching extension where you're stretching out your... Um, your um, nipple area. Are, is, is the nipple called the areola? Is the it nipple's the bump in the middle, yeah. and the coloured area around is called the areola. So okay. the, you've got the disc, which is the areola, and the bump. No way, so the, so the nipple, nipple is actually just that bump. Yeah, that's it. Oh dude, I'm learning things today. That's amazing. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought the nipple was the whole thing. No. Oh shit. Fucking, this is enlightening. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's about the, that on the recovery. Um, here's one like about the, the age thing. Um, someone's saying, you know, they're 17. They've had their gyno since they're about 11. Is it worth, um, you know, at that age, is it worth Yeah, it depends. doing anything about yeah, it? It depends. If it's small, um, most guys go through puberty around, say, 13. Yeah. So it's probably four years since he had his testosterone rush in yeah. puberty. Yeah. So if you've still got lumps there at four years later, I have done guys uh, as young as 17. Okay. And yeah. they've, they've had a good result. Yeah. Um, but uh, it depends on how large they are. If they're, if they're, if they're big, they're clearly not going to go away. It yeah. might even be worth in that case, putting on an anti-estrogen. Yeah. And even if it doesn't shrink them down very much, it will make them as small as possible for surgery, make the surgery yeah. technically yeah. easier and give them a less chance of complications. Yeah. One big question which I've been getting a lot, especially in the DMs, is people talking about things to shrink the gyno, like through drugs and stuff. Like, it, I think, uh, is it estrus? I don't even know the name. Electriz electrizole or something? Oh. Uh, there's letrozole and anastrozole, yeah, nice. yeah. and there's tamoxifen. Yeah. Uh, letrozole and anastrozole, uh, they prevent the production of estrogen, so yeah. you generally have a very low estrogen yeah, uh, yeah. situation when you're taking those. They can have side effects. Um, yeah. I had one guy who got depression after he went on letrozole, yeah. and uh, that persisted even after he stopped taking the letrozole. I had guys who've said their sex drive completely crushed on yeah, the result. Yeah, I thought about this as well, because lots of people hit me up after I got my surgery and they're like, oh, why don't you just run the Arimidex or Electrozole or whatever? And I, by this point I was like, well, 
I don't care, like I've just got my gyno completely removed. In terms of whether it's going to shrink your breast down enough that you can avoid having surgery, no. Yeah. I virtually never. I had one guy who had small boobs to start with. Yeah. And he shrunk down to the point where he was happy enough not to have surgery, but yeah. that's one out of like 600. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's very unlikely that uh, anti-estrogens are going to shrink your breast tissue down enough. Yeah. If you've got gynecomastia, yeah. then uh, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. they do have uh, potential complications. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I think if you are going to take some anti-estrogens before your surgery, it might shrink the breast tissue down a little bit, which yeah. might make the surgery like, uh, less complicated yeah. and possibly give you a better outcome. But I, I think it's marginal. Yeah. One question we've got here, um, people are asking, depending on the size of the chest, like, if they come in to and get the surgery, is it more beneficial for them to be leaner or to, to have, if they've bulked up and got more body fat? Is, yeah, is there any benefit to... It depends how much fat you reckon you can shred between when you just yeah. make the decision I mean, to have your gyna removed and the actual day of surgery. Yeah. But um, the less fat you've got on your chest, uh, the better the outcome usually, uh, not always, but usually, okay. because uh, one of the things we do after surgery is we compress the chest with a vest and also yeah. with some special tape which compresses yeah. the cavities where the breast came out yeah. to minimize bleeding. If you've got a lot of fat, it's very hard to compress and put pressure on the blood vessels because you're just compressing the fat. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, um, one thing, the, the compression vest, um, is that something you still offer, because I think I bought mine second hand you had yeah no we uh we pr we provide those so okay. there's an additional cost for those yeah, yeah but um they're essential we used to reuse them but yeah. then they lost a lot of their springiness so okay yeah, they, they exactly. weren't compressing as well yeah. and we used to get people to buy their own but then people would come in with like, like short ones short long ones ones, ones with long sleeves okay. ones, ones with cutouts around so that's here. something that you yeah, something you, we, you we, can we offer. Okay. Yeah, something uh, we, we sell yeah. as well. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, I just accidentally clicked on the hashtag that this person put in their question. The hashtag was bitch tits life. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've got a, yeah, a question here, solid bid freeze. Um, I'm based in Brisbane and have been looking around Brisbane and Gold Coast area for surgeons. I've got a pretty severe case of gynae and it's droopy slash sagged. I've carried uh, it with a bit of weight for many years. I've been motivated by your videos and have just started leaning out. Just wanted to ask Dr. Ian Mitchell about the difference in pricing uh, with a severe case like mine and any recommendations with sagginess. There's a lot you can do if you've got a full on female breast. Yeah. Uh, you can remove the breast tissue itself, the gland, yeah. and you can take some of the fat out as well. And yeah. you can actually reduce the sagginess in the breast as a kind of a flap that you can cut. Okay. You move the nipple up and tighten Is that up something the skin. that you can do like all of that or do you just remove I, I, the breast? Well, Generally speaking, um, hasn't been necessary for me to do any of those more advanced kind of procedures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, what I'd say to this guy, if he's just in Brisbane, is it's probably worth making a trip down to the Gold Coast yeah, for the day yeah. and seeing me because I can give him specifics. You yeah, can so, see him in person. And yeah, that's right. That. So, right. AJ, uh, <laughs> description box, the, the details are all there. Someone said, yeah, freeze my great video, man. I've gone to myself, seven, I'm 17 and the gland is hardened, so I, you know, I pretty much have it for life. How should I deal with the confidence part? I'll get it removed, personally. If that's something that's in your budget and you, especially if you're around Australia, Comes the end, and, and and we do offer finance as I said. Yes, yeah, so like you're saying, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, there's one thing because th that's the thing. It's um, I know for me before I got my surgery, it was the, the ratio of rewards to dealing with it. Like, okay, is it worth me paying, you know, a couple of thousand dollars to get rid of it, or trying to live my life by still having it? And for me, it, it, I wish I got it sooner, basically. I yeah. wish I got it removed sooner. This, you know, I wish yeah. I did that surgery. That's, that's a common story. Most guys come in, and they say, I would have liked to got it done years ago, but I couldn't didn't think I could afford it. And they just didn't thing. know about it as well, which is which yeah. is awesome, you know, we're doing these videos. When I did that first video, and, and you'll know from the surgeries you've done from it, people who have hit you up and they, they didn't know there, this option was available, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Gynecomastia is something that most guys don't talk about. Yeah. A lot of guys go through life um, with shame about different things and gynecomastia is a common one that people are ashamed of. Yeah. Like I said, they'll choose their clothing a particular way to yeah, hide their yeah, gyne yeah. and they you know, they don't won't go to the beach or yeah. the pool and their sort of life is restricted by yeah. their all these sort of self conscious yeah. concerns they've got. So yeah. I think one thing for me guys, like I've had a lot of people reach out and they'll that you know, probably the most common thing people say freeze 
I haven't even done steroids ever, but I've like one of my nipples, it's like I've got gyno and they just, and, they, and they're, they're really struggling to explain to themselves why they have it or to anyone else even. Um, I know it's, it's, it's just something that's, you know, you can be so self-conscious about, but I think it's nice for people, you know, I'm doing these vids and stuff, people can hopefully see, you don't need to just be smashing steroids to have gyno. It's like, you can get it from pu puberty and it's something that, you know, could end up not going away. For some people it does, if they're lucky enough, it'll... Yeah, there are other reasons people are gyne as well, like yeah. some people put on other medications can do it. Uh, sometimes you might have a hormonal issue. Diets as well, like soy and stuff, I know Yeah, soy is about... supposed to have a lot of estrogen in it, that yeah. could do it. I'm just going through the Instagram questions, guys. Um, the common ones just seem to be, am I too young, like being 17 and stuff, I guess it's just... I think 17 would kind of be the minimum age where you'd ever you consider the you surgery. Go if, lower, right, yeah. No, no, if you're 15, really, you're still suffering the effects of puberty if you've got yeah. gynec hemastia, so you really need to give it time for, to naturally go away. A lot, a lot of gynec, when you're a teenager, will go away. Yeah. But, you know, by the time you're 17, if you've got fairly significant boobs, then it's, yeah. it's worth considering seeing me or yeah. someone. Um, are there any side effects post gyno surgery? Decreased chest strength, like you know, presses or anything? I mean, it doesn't like affect not, the not, muscle, not effectively, but just from maybe if I take a month off training and yeah. you get the surgery, and you, you know, and then you're a month off, and then you you're not going to be as strong, obviously. Yeah, I think, back I, think, I, think, got... I think these are logical things. Like yeah. if you took a yeah. month off because you're a broken ankle, you have the same thing. But in terms of yeah, in terms of the procedure itself, actually affecting your strength, it's not going to. There's no, 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 it, it, it's it not should, like you're it really, should, really it, taking it, muscle out. No, 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 it shouldn't shouldn't affect your muscle. Uh, you should have the same strength. Um, should be able to get back to a really good shape if that's what you're in beforehand. We've got a nice uh, comment for you here. Ian. Uh, someone said, Dr. Mitchell is a life changer. Thank you for informing everyone about him with a smiley face. Oh, that's very kind. That's nice, yeah. I mean, yeah, you changed my life. Oh, well, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. Just going over the last of these questions in here, I mean, a lot of them are repeat questions, so I think, yeah, we've pretty much gone over most of the, the main uh, concerns people have regarding the, the issue. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you're doing great service by telling people about gynecomastia. I know People who've come to see me, who've seen your videos, say they like you because you're really honest and real. You don't bullshit people. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what I've found. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that, mate. And I appreciate everyone who like has come in and even like seen Dr. Mitchell in the first place from from my videos. So, Absolutely, you're doing um, a great service. It's funny, guys. Like, um, one like I was saying on the last bit, when I got my surgery, I just kind of wanted to put it behind me. Um, Ian reached out to me a few months ago. He actually just moved um, moved clinics here in the Gold Coast. So, um, yeah, I sold my practice in <clears throat> in Main Beach and yeah. now in Labrador Park. Yeah, which is really close to Harbour Town. Yeah, yeah. I think you're saying you've have you been based out of here before? Yeah, I when I first started on the Gold Coast, the yeah. uh, first practice I uh, came to was uh, Labrador Park. Yeah, I was actually waiting for my uh, registration in New South Wales. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, in those days, uh, if you had to register in each state, and while I was waiting for them to process my registration application, I just did a locum here. Yeah. And the people here are lovely. The uh, yeah. staff really, the nature of the staff hasn't changed. People at Labrador Park, they're lovely, they're really helpful. They go out of their way to bend over backwards to, to help all the patients and yeah. staff here, so. Oh, yeah. that's awesome, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks, Ian, for your your time. And I know, obviously, it's, it's I don't know. Have you have you been enjoying the, the vids and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah. I've, um, obviously, it's something you're specialised in, so you like to yeah, talk I, about it, spread I, awareness. Well, I, it's an area I specialise in. I'm not a specialist, though. I'm okay. a GP surgeon. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I've done tons of gynae surgery, and people are generally very happy. Yeah. You get some people that get complications, as anyone who does surgery will get yeah. those complications, but uh, I think generally speaking, people are very happy with uh, the results. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. So, Thanks a lot. It's been yeah, yeah. really good to being associated with you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, guys, what we're going to do actually, uh, we're thinking of even taking someone through a surgery on the channel here. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, I'm, I'm definitely keen. So guys, we'll actually, you've got um, someone... i got someone in mind, okay, uh, cool. and uh, there'll be more about that, I guess, on the, when you do make the video. So. Awesome. So, yeah, guys, if you uh, have enjoyed this video, if it's been something that's helpful, if you've had your question answered, or if, yeah, you've just enjoyed, like, me and, and Dr. Mitchell here talking about this, this topic, which no one really talks about, make sure you hit the thumbs up on the video. It always is appreciated. 
and uh, give a thumbs up as well if you want to see uh, a video of us actually taking someone through a surgery from the consultation, like like everything that kind of goes along with it. Yeah, there'll be a consultation <clears throat> yeah. for the actual surgery itself. Yeah, and then we the, can we can take them through everything because yeah. I think when I vlogged it, I just kind of vlogged the day of the surgery, just rocked up and you know it was yeah. yeah we, we didn't let you actually film the surgery. Yeah. I know you wanted to. Yeah, Anne was like, "Who's this guy with the camera?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, but that's now, now now I know you're a legend. So that's okay, good. sick, sick. Yeah, we'll do it, guys. So um. Yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see you on the next vids. And uh, comment below if there's anything, any other questions we actually haven't answered. I'll I'll jump on the the comment section. I'll I'll talk to Ian maybe and answer some more questions in the comments below. If you are interested in possibly getting a consultation with with Ian, Ian aka Doctor Mitchell, Ian. I see. I'm just calling him Ian, but that's fine um, either way. You don't care if the patient's coming. No, no, they call me Ian. Oh, sweet, sweet. All right. Uh, all the details are in the description box below. <clears throat> losing my voice now. Right, we Too need excited. To, we need to wrap this up earlier. <laughs> if any of you are interested in getting a consultation with Dr. Mitchell, uh, all the details are in my description box there. Labrador Park, just give them a ring and you know they'll just ring the reception and can book him for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Sick. All right, well, I, we'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, until then, have a good week, everyone. And I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Thanks, Reese.